like that. And, and the, the minute the towers were hit, you know, as a Jew and just, you know, understanding the past, I mean, I knew that that meant war. And, and I understood that war was necessary, but I'm also an artist and a musician, and I was around, totally surrounded by lots of people who, you know, have a more left point of view. And I didn't join right away after the towers fell. It took me a little while, but I just eventually got tired of sort of verbally fighting with people and just feeling like the people that I was around had no clue what was going on, and I wanted to do something about it. I wanted to be a part of the solution. I wanted to um, challenge myself. I, I, I definitely wanted to fight terrorism. I mean, I think that's imperative. These, these people shout from the rooftops their intentions to destroy us, and they're supremacists. And, you know, as somebody who truly believes in, in women's rights and... Um, you know, uh, these women in Islamic countries, you know, they're considered like cattle <laughs> and like the, you know, their, their worth is like a fraction of men. And we hear, you know, we enjoy so many rights and women Including are subjugated, you know, women are subjugated and, and mutilated and they have no, uh, no rights in these countries to speak freely like I can, and I, I really kind of wanted to fight for them and to fight for myself and, and America. Okay, so 2003, you, you joined the, uh, the Jireens. By the way, um, one, of our, one of our very good friends is uh, sitting in the studio, and she's a... A marine mom. She's a marine mom Aww, right here. Oh, bless you. Well, God bless you. All right, so you joined in 2003, and, and uh, give us your, your, uh, your training succinctly, and then how you wound up in Iraq, what you did there, and uh, in particular, you wrote a, a wonderful piece and published a piece about women in combat based upon yesterday's decision. But give everybody a little context to you getting to Iraq and then uh, getting to the point of writing this. Uh, well, they, uh, based on my testing, I actually went in for, like, aviation navigation or something, and that fell through while I was in the middle of boot camp. Um, so I didn't realize I was open contract until, they, you know, like five weeks in, they put you in a class, and they say, well, if you weren't promised a job or you didn't contract a job, then now's the time when we're going to tell you where you go. So they called me up, and I said, what do you mean? I'm not open contract. <laughs> um, they said, well, what were you supposed to do? And I told them aviation navigation, and they said, well, you must have tested high. We'll put you in data. So they put data is, you know, uh, it's, it's combat communication. So that's your radios, your uh, cryptology, and your uh, computer communication. So making sure that everybody can, can remain in co uh, communication with each other. And so that was my MOS, my field, and we prepared to do that and go out and do that in country. So that was my primary job. Um, we had 4,000 people on um, Camp Fallujah to maintain those communications for, and, and that's to maintain the communications on Camp Fallujah and on the uh, forward operating bases, the FOBs. And as a secondary duty, um, I did entry checkpoint duty. At the time, um, they had, they were frisking everybody who came through the five checkpoints uh, around the outskirts of Fallujah. And we, uh, just by checking people for explosive devices and, and to respect the culture of men not touching women who are not related to them, they had the female Marines checking the females coming into the city. Oh, my gosh. And so the, so that was that was my job, and uh, you know we seriously reduced the number of bombs that were going off in um, in Fallujah. Uh, we had a measurable impact on reducing the nice violence job. in in Fallujah. So you were checking uh, fully hajibed up, burkered up women coming in. It could have been men, could have been anything, and you had to physically walk up to them and. And touch well, they actually walk walk up to us through our checkpoint. We have to check them and their and their bags and their children and stuff like that. And I I, I want to tell you as a, as a preface, uh, you know, to this conversation that you know, 
we had women, first of all, the women who can speak English, they're very proud of it, and they would speak English to us. And I was actually surprised, you know, when they were telling me things like, you know, we love you, God bless you, you are our sister, please be careful. I mean, I got chills just now when I said that you are our sister, you know? I, I mean, it was really, really moving to be able to, to do that and, and, you know, communicate and talk with those women. I, I had learned, a, you know, nominal Arabic to be able to, to speak on a, a very, very uh, basic level, you know, with them. <laughs> Enough to tell the men that I was married and had, you know, four kids and stuff like that, which I didn't, but I was married, but I didn't have any kids, but anything to deter the Iraqi male. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. All right, so now um, you, you did that, you got out, and uh, you're, you're doing a whole bunch of different things right now. What possessed you to write this article uh, yesterday? And tell us a, a little bit about it's what's in the article. It's a great article, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, and if I may uh, make a pitch, this is, I have a WordPress blog. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, it's Political Animal, and on WordPress, it's Political Animal. Um, and, uh, and I guess that kind of, that in itself, the title kind of sums up um, uh, why I do this. I, I can't help but be outspoken about these values, and it's various things. I mean... I'm, I'm just your all-around conservative for, you know, for strong borders, for strong foreign policy, you know, uh, enforcement of our illegal immigration, or our immigration laws against illegal immigration, you know, for veterans' causes, for, um, you know, these conservative values. And, you know, I guess as a Jew, I just feel a particular um, call when I, when I reflect on the pre-World War II years leading up to World War II and how many people were silent. And, of course, Thomas Jefferson said, you know, all that tyranny needs to, to take hold is for good people to be silent. I just can't be silent. It's too important, and I get in fights with people, and I lose friends sometimes, you know, and, and a lot of people are, are seeing that. It's heartbreaking to lose, yeah. to lose friends to politics, but you know what? It's too important. And, you know, because this is my life that's on the line. As a Jewish woman, I mean, as a woman, and then as a Jew, and then, you know, it's when we're fighting this war against people who sing songs about washing their hands and the blood of the Jews, and, and I try to communicate to my friends, that's not somebody else. That's me, the person that you're looking at, the, the you know, photographer, cellist, you know, lover of music and art, and, you know, just I love people, I love my friends, and, you know, affection, and just, you know, I, I want to fight for its right. I want women to have their rights. I want women to, to be able to be happy. I want us to be free, you know, from um, from people who 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 want to be the next master race. I mean, they proclaim it on a daily basis. It's just, it, it's unbelievable. And so um, that's, that, those are some of the things that drove me to, to become a Marine and wanted to fight, and, and that's still what drives me. I mean, I wanted to be a part of the solution. Um, and, and, and. Well, you, hey, Jude, to... Jude, you had some very specific points that uh, you said are real areas of conflict, of problems, or of, you know, game over issues with women in combat. And they were, they were very instructive and formative. Go through some of those points in your article. Yeah. Um, uh, well, there's several, and, uh, you know, uh, the first basic physical level, first of all, if they really wanted to totally level the playing field and say women can do what men can do, then they would have one standard for everybody in the military. They don't. There are separate standards for women and men. I went through them. I think it's a good thing that, that the, in the Marine Corps, at least, um, the women train separately from the men, but we also have a separate standard. And, you know, we, we, don't have, we can take longer to do the run time or, or just various things like that. 
even when you're practicing doing that fireman's carry, where you put the guy on top of your back and you have to go run with him, you know, they'll pair you up with somebody who's a similar size. But that's not the truth of being in combat. The truth of being in combat is, first of all, you're all wearing 30 to 50 to 80 pounds of gear. So you're already heavier. And then this guy who is at least 180 pounds without the gear then has another 80 pounds of gear on top of them. And if he gets hurt, it's your job to never leave a man behind. You know, so just on a physical level. It makes um, no sense. No, it doesn't. And they're not serious about the equality because if they were, they would have just one standard. And most women would not pass that standard. I myself may have not passed that standard. I don't know. I was pretty, you know, sort of top quarter in terms of performance all the time. But still, you know, and I worked my butt off. I mean, I worked, <laughs> I worked so hard just to, you know, and I wasn't the top. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, um, and I took it because I took it so seriously. But uh, another of the points that I bring up in, um, in my article, you know, it's about the relationships because everybody can identify with the ups and downs of relationships. And people know what a peril it is. I mean, I was just a rule for myself not to get involved with coworkers. And the, the only time I broke that rule, I married him. He's my husband to this day, you know? <laughs> That's a big... Uh... But, still, but still, you know, it's, it's whether... What I point out in my article is whether the relationship is good or bad, uh, it still is, dis destroys unit morality because of things like... It, it, even if it's a good relationship, it can, it can breed uh, resentment and, and perceptions of favoritism. Among the people hey, who, are, who are having a relationship. Jude, uh, we're, we're starting to push the clock a little bit. I want you to comment on the, the, uh, the menstrual cycle issue. I had never thought of that. No, well, I, I did. I brought it up yesterday, oh, and I, mean, I brought up pregnancy, and I brought up rape. But and just briefly, and then we're going to open it up. Some of the folks in here want to ask you some questions. Sure. I mean, just aside from relationships, from sex, from all those stuff, okay, when a woman has her menstrual, menstrual cycle, she loses half of her strength. I mean, literally. So even on those performance tests that I would have to perform a few times a year, I would try to schedule it when I was not in that cycle because that affects how many pull-ups you can do or, or they sort of change right. the uh, physical fitness test. But you imagine going through all the ups and downs that a woman goes through in her cycle there's the emotional, every, everything that a man hates about a woman going through the period. Yeah. I mean, nobody wants to talk about it, and I'm, I'm sorry to, if it seems a little bit vulgar, but you know what? War is vulgar. Yeah. War is right. vulgar and bloody, and it's hell. And you're going to put a woman going through her menstrual cycle in it. I mean, seriously think about a convoy. And, oops, I got my period. What are you going to do? You're going to stop the whole convoy. A security risk, you know, put everybody at risk because you have to stand still because you have your feminine need that men just don't have. And that's a good thing for men, you know. Um, it, it's just... Oh, it's, fascinating. it's a fascinating point. Let me open it up for some questions here. Do you have anything, uh, Marine Mom, to ask Jude? Um, no, think I just know think... that with, just, with my own son, I know that uh, he told me about... Uh, climbing mountains and so on like that, and uh, he would take on the burden of the weaker ones who uh, just weren't making it with their bundles they had to carry, and he'd double this up, and, and I just, uh, I don't see a woman being able, being to, able do to do that. that. Just not at all. Not at all. Mark, Mark, you, Mark, you spent some years in the military. What do, what do you got there? Yeah, that's what the, and, and, I, and first of all, uh, beyond the whole uh, sexual issue between men and women, which is a... a, a a huge uh, distraction in the field uh, uh -huh. and the pregnancy issue and all the female issues that, 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 that happen to women and and men just on, on the distraction level too and I just uh, do you think that this whole situation has a mo ulterior motive other than just integrating women into the military or do you think it's something that that it's intentionally being done by the Obama administration 
to weaken the military around the world, or, or, or do you think there's some other issue? Uh, it's not just the Obama administration, but they are doing absolutely everything they can to weaken this military. Look at what they did with the sequestration. Just putting uh, the military in the, in the crosshairs of, of cutting debt as, as being on the chopping block, if you don't do the X, then we're going to cut this. I mean, that, <laughs> you know, that shows what their intent is. Don't ask, don't tell. All the problems of women being in the combat zone and even in the military in general, the problems, because those problems aren't just for the combat zone. You open that up when you repeal don't ask, don't tell. Suddenly, men who, uh, you know, get a sexual advance and they would say, hey, that's sexual harassment. No, you're a homophobe. Okay, so it's all weakening military readiness and the military preparedness. And, you know, it, it's a strong parallel between that and what they're doing now, attacking the gun control, uh, attacking our, our Second Amendment right. You know, it's weakening us, weakening, weakening, weakening. Alan, okay, you got a question for uh, Jude, yeah, Alan? Yeah, Jude, one question. Uh, the top rounds who are going along with Obama on this, <clears throat> are they doing this because they're fearful if they uh, say no, they are against it? that they would lose their promotional opportunities? Or do they really feel that women and men uh, are absolutely on a uh, parallel level as far as serving in the military? Well, uh, although I cannot speak for any, you know, uh, upper level brass, uh, I do know that the common sentiment is that once you're getting to that upper level, it's all about career. Mm. Um, so. So there is absolutely, there are absolutely people who are doing it to keep their careers, um, and and there are people, um, there are people who have that, who are considering that when they when they do this, you know, they want to keep their careers, they want to keep moving up, and and it's all about that. I'm not saying that that's every every person. I'm not even saying that that's, you know, ubiquitous. So that's um, definitely a factor. Yeah. Like CJ, you got yeah, something. Yeah, I do. Um, I, I just want to float this by you. I brought it up yesterday and see what you think about it. I think part of part of the agenda behind this is not just to weaken the military, but it's really um, about a cultural transformation to blur the lines between genders. Um, it's part of the whole atmosphere of, of really the changing what constitutes a family. To feminize man masculinity and, and to... To take to, away the masculinity of men, to take away the femininity of women, um, and really to equalize everybody at the absolute ultimate biological level. What do you think of that? Well, and it's, an artif it's artificial Of course it is, yeah. It's absolutely artificial, and um, you know that's what that's what the communist countries have done. Um, it, it's it's absolutely tyrannical, and and it's a parallel between the you know if you draw the parallel between the collective versus the individual. This is all about the collectivism. Yeah. We are individuals. Collectivism yeah. versus individuals. Women are individuals. Yeah, we are, yeah. Uh, women are individuals. We have individual strengths. Men and women are complements of each other. We are not the same. We are not biologically the same. We are not psychologically the same. We are not metaphysically the same. Oh, I know, you know? that for sure. Well, we know that. <laughs> well, on that note, <laughs> on, I know that for sure. On that note, we're well, going yeah. to... On that note, it. the women and the men of Trento... Vision. We're in complete agreement <laughs> on that one. On that note... Jude, we're gonna we're gonna have to let you go. Um, but it's and well, great meeting you. So you. Much for, yeah. yeah, thank well, you for, so much for having me. And um, you know, if I can plug again, go, of course. go to WordPress. Please do. Yes. Yeah. What's what's your uh, what's your blog again? Give that out. It's um, judeeden.wordpress.com. Okay. And the name of the and the name is Political Animal. Right, because we're supposed to be political animals. That's right. Hey, thank you very much, Jude. Uh, we will thank absolutely you so have much, you back. Um, we'll get the site, the Skype sorted out. Okay, goodbye, Jude. That's um, thank you. Jude uh, bye -bye. Eden, a, uh, bye. an artist, another marine. Another underachiever. And yeah, 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 another one. <laughs> another um, another Trinto Vision underachiever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, I listened to uh, uh, Brian and Steve, your good friends. <laughs> 
this morning, and Brian had an interesting point. Yeah. He thinks he thinks the Obama administration mm -hmm. floated this thing right now mm -hmm. so, that, so that we, the conservatives, uh -huh. would fight for women uh -huh. not being in combat, uh -huh. which would then make more women on the left get angry at us uh -huh. because we don't want them to be equal uh -huh. and solidify the voting base on the left even more. Uh-huh. And that's an interesting and uh, also, byproduct of this whole mess. And also, there, there's this, you know, Hil the Hillary Clinton Benghazi thing. You know, the thing yeah, came right out, out out with that, yeah. and the whole. And the whole. Uh, there's so many. This, this is. I think this is a big distraction too. This. Is, hey, look at my Which, hand over that here. Was my okay, first we gotta thought. go. We gotta Women go. Women in combat. Will they get guns? We gotta go. We gotta go. And everybody. Uh, okay, we have we're a lot going, of stuff going, going on today. Go. We're we're screwed. America's screwed. <laughs> but we're going to go have a little cocktail to relax and figure out how to save America, because we will here on Trento Vision right now. Goodbye. <laughs>